Back in May of 2019, the news showed that the under-20 Norway national team had beaten Honduras 12-0. That's pretty crazy, but I, I thought to myself that happens sometimes, it's not completely crazy for you to level match. But then, I saw the score sheets and saw the name Erling Braut Haaland for the first time. It was written there 9 times for the 9 goals he had scored. Who was this kid? I went to check his stats and he had 5 goals in 558 minutes for Red Bull Salzburg. That's really good, but he probably couldn't do it in a bigger team, right? Well. That's the foundation for Erling Haaland's career so far, a cycle in which he scores a ton of goals and people question whether or not he could do it at a higher level, only for him to go there and be even better. I guess you could say that over the last year I became a big fan of the boy. And how could I not? His story is incredible and at times it almost seems like he was made in a lab. He was born in Leeds, which might seem odd at first until he realized that his name might sound a bit familiar, and the reason for that is simple. He's the son of Alf Inge Haaland, who played for Man City and Leeds United in the early 2000s. Two years after moving back to Norway in 2003, he would join his first youth team, Breina FK. His success was immediate, with his former coach saying that the first two times he touched the ball ended in goals, and they knew from then on that he had to play with the older kids. As one of his youth team coaches got promoted to first team coach, Haaland got called up for his first professional season, which given he failed to score despite being given over 400 minutes of playing time, might make it seem like he failed to impress, but that was not the case. By the end, he would have proposals to play for Hoffenheim and Molda, and he would end up choosing the second, where he would, interestingly enough, play under Ole Gunnar Soskaer. After this season at Molda, it might have really seemed like his goal scoring had slowed down, but then it's hard to say what happened, but Alan found his mojo again. Over the summer, he played 9 matches for the under 19 Norwegian national team, getting 11 goals, one every 70 minutes, and the next season, he would keep his form, getting 12 goals in 1600 minutes for Molda. The 17 year old would finish the league as the third highest top scorer. Once again, he'd be on the move, this time another two offers arose, Red Bull Salzburg and Leeds United. Regardless of him having been born there, he would move to RB Salzburg instead. Joining in January, he'd finish out the season getting 5 goals in just a bit more than 500 minutes. He was clearly back and he was on a roll, and between these two seasons he'd have his iconic 9 goal performance against Honduras. It was now time for him to take on his first major challenge as he entered his first full season with RB Salzburg, who are now in the Champions League. I believe his time there might become one of the most rejoiced times of his career if he does go on to fulfill the potential we deem him to have. By looking at his stats, it's simple. Haaland was now the biggest fish in what was for him a very, very small lake. First match of the season, he got his first hat trick. Only three matches in, he'd get his second and go on a seven match goal scoring streak, getting his third and fourth hat trick. One of them coming in his first Champions League match ever as he got 72 minutes of playing time against Genk. His name was making more and more headlines, and the same old question was being put forward would he be able to make it against top tier clubs? Well, as his streak slowed down, it was time for his second ever Champions League match, facing European champions Liverpool. As hard as it might be to wrap your head around this, at this time Haaland was still being frequently used as a bench player, and in that match it once again only got the chance to come in later on. As he came in in the 56th minute, Salzburg were behind 3-1, an expected result given the strength of the opposition. The minute he came in, Salzburg got their second goal through Minamino, who eventually would join none other than Liverpool. And four minutes later, Haaland got his goal and Salzburg were now tied. You can argue that the goal was just a tap in and isn't impressive or that Salzburg would eventually go behind and lose the match, but Haaland got one small shot at proving he could do it on a big stage and he got the job done. Now it was only time he proved he could do it consistently as well. In his third Champions League match, he would face Napoli. An Italian team with players like Koulibaly would certainly be able to stop this 19-year-old Norwegian kid, right? Well, not really. Haaland would get two goals this time, despite Salzburg still going on to lose the match once again. Over the next two matches, he would get another chance at playing both Genk and Napoli, scoring once in both of the matches. 
By now, I was paying a lot of attention to Holland. The kid seemed to be quite simply one of the most deadly strikers in the world. But I saw two things that could come out of this Champions League. One, he had a strong shot at becoming the second ever player to score in every Champions League group stage match, after only Cristiano Ronaldo, easily the greatest player the competition had ever seen. And second, if Salzburg kept losing anyway, I wouldn't get the chance to see him play the knockouts. As Napoli beat Genk and Salzburg fell 2-0 to Liverpool, Salzburg were out of the Champions League and Haaland had failed to tie Ronaldo's record. But still, just to show you how stunning it is that a teenager had scored in all of his first five Champions League matches, that would be the same as Messi's longest streak in the same competition. Incredible. I honestly felt sad I wouldn't get to watch this kid making top teams look silly, but in a way, it wasn't just about him. Salzburg had an incredible team, and I was putting my money on them to be that year's equivalent of Ajax's 18-19 season. With Soboslai, Haaland, Minamino and Wang Hishan, I truly believed they'd be able to break through any defense, but as it seemed it was too late for them, Haaland got another shot as many of Europe's top clubs fought for his signing during the winter market. As his transfer was not only great for his qualities, but also due to the release clause of only 25 million euros attached to his contract. By the end of it all, Dortmund would win the race for Haaland, who would join them for the remaining of the season, ending his year at Salzburg with 28 goals in 22 matches. This was honestly just one more chance for Haaland to show off his goal-scoring prowess. Now playing in one of Europe's top 5 leagues, his schedule would require even more consistent results. And well, in Haaland's first 4 matches in the Bundesliga, he scored 8 goals. 8. Extremely impressive, right? Then, let me tell you something else. He averaged 45 minutes of playing time per match over those four. So, Haaland was averaging 4 goals per 90 minutes. I just can't stress how insane that is. It finally failed to score in his fifth match, only to then get his first chance at a Champions League knockout match, facing none other than PSG, as Haaland was at this point becoming frequently compared with Mbappe in the conversation for who was the best young player in the world. In the first leg, no goals would come from the first 68 minutes until, of course, out of a rebound, Haaland put Dortmund in front. But as Neymar tied the match soon after, and many could question Haaland's contribution to the first goal, he scored again, with a thunderous shot from outside the box to win the match for Dortmund. It had happened. Haaland had decimated one of Europe's top teams, and fortunately, the second match would be an upset, as PSG, despite getting less shots on target, would manage a 2 0 win and Dortmund would be out. From there on, Haaland would finish the season in substantially less impressive form, only scoring in three of his last 10 matches. Despite this, he had finished his first season at top level with 10 Champions League goals. Double digits in his first season, can you believe it? Only 16 players had ever managed that much over a single Champions League season, and very, very few in only 8 matches. To add to that, he finished the season with 44 goals in 40 matches in all competitions, and just like this, we arrive at the current season where, despite all the problems football has been going through, Haaland has been in perhaps the best form of his life, having only failed to score in 3 out of the 13 matches he has played so far and averaging a goal every 60 minutes on the pitch. And one thing I'm definitely keeping my eye on is once again the Champions League. Now playing for a better team and in a much easier group, he has already scored in all four matches he has played in. Haaland might truly be Ronaldo's Champions League successor and one thing is certain, the kid seems to be worthy of carrying his crown. To end the video I'd like to show you some stats that show just how insane this man's goal scoring is. With his first 22 shots on target in the Champions League, he scored 16 goals. In the previous season, despite only playing half the season at Salzburg, he finished as their top scorer. In the other half, he played at Dortmund and got 16 goals, only 4 away from being their top scorer for the season as well. In January, he won Bundesliga Player of the Season. That month, he only played 59 minutes and still scored 5 goals. Before getting knocked out by PSG, he had as many Champions League goals that season as the entire Barcelona squad. He had managed more than a goal per game in every competition he played since the previous season, except for the German Cup. He was the first ever Dortmund player to score in his debut at the Champions League, Bundesliga and German Cup. And now a real 
real weird one I'm sure you weren't expecting. It's still to this day as the world record for the longest long jump by a six-year-old. Yes, he, he was into track and field sports before football. Haaland is truly exceptional and has been the young player who has captured my high the most over his last few seasons. It's easy to disregard him as just a poacher or a goal scorer, but his speed, athleticism, ability to serve other players and even his technical ability considering his height are extremely impressive and leave us with the great promise of the player he might become. This was kind of a different video, I hope you enjoyed, this time I I try to focus on the future rather than the, the past, which is what I most commonly do with our regular series going over the greatest players of all time. But yeah, regardless, this was it. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe. And yeah, see you next week. Bye.